We begin with a rapidly developing story out of Syria. Iranian state media is reporting that an Israeli airstrike has targeted the Iranian embassy compound in Damascus. Several diplomats were reportedly killed in the attack. Reuters news agency says a senior commander of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, Mohammad Reza Zahedi, is among the dead. Let's bring in our correspondent, Zaina Khoda. She's joining us live from Beirut. And this has just happened um, in the last few hours, Zaina. But what are you hearing? What more are you hearing about the attack and any reaction to it? Well, this is very much a developing story. Like you mentioned, Syrian state television, as well as the Iranian media, are reporting that the Iranian consulate was the target of an apparent Israeli strike in the heart of Damascus. Videos from the Syrian capital show a building right next to the consulate completely destroyed. And you do see as well an Iranian flag. So this in itself is very significant and could have serious implications, targeting a diplomatic mission which is supposed to be protected under international law. Now, Iranian state television is saying that diplomats were killed in that strike. But security sources have been quoted as saying that a top-ranking Quddus Force commander, an Iranian commander in the Revolutionary Guards, Mohammad Riza Zahadi, was killed in that strike. He wouldn't, he won't be the first Iranian commander or general to have been killed in recent months. Israel has carried out numerous assassinations in recent months, targeting Iranian uh, commanders as well as those uh, commanders uh, allied with Iran. But no doubt the location. The fact that the Syrian state media and Iranian media are saying that a diplomatic mission was targeted, um, there is still no reaction really um, from, uh, there's still no confirmation, if you like, from Iran on, on whether or not uh, Mohammad Reza uh, Zahadi was killed. But this is definitely another blow for Iran um, in, in recent months. Absolutely, Zaina. And as you've been saying and as we've been reporting for certainly since the war on Gaza began but for years before that uh, the Israeli government and military have carried out assassinations have killed senior members of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps but have they ever carried out an attack such as this on an embassy building This is what is significant about this strike, and this is why it could have serious implications. It really crosses red lines. Now, how will Iran react? Many have said that Israel has been acting with little restraint, crossing red lines, because Iran's response has been restrained, whether it's Iran or whether it's allies in the region. You mentioned that um, Israel has been hitting Iranian and Iranian-linked targets in Syria for years now, preventing them from entrenching themselves militarily. But since October, since the war on Gaza, and since the groups, um, uh, uh, the part of the, the network of the so-called axis of resistance, which is led by Iran, opened fronts against Israeli forces to help Palestinians in Gaza, then we've seen an uptick of Israeli strikes in Syria, going after commanders, warehouses, uh, uh, really trying to degrade their operational capabilities. And when you take out commanders, um, you know, like, like if indeed this is confirmed, Mohammad Reza uh, Zahadi, then what you're doing is you're taking out uh, liaison officers, the, the people who link uh, all these groups together. Now, if you talk to anybody in Israel, what they will say is that they believe that Iran uses um, its diplomatic missions, whether in Beirut, whether in Damascus or elsewhere, uh, for meetings, for planning meetings. They use it as some sort of a headquarters. So they, in one way or another, are trying to justify, uh, t t you know, targeting, targeting this building. Uh, but no doubt this is a serious development. There's already tensions across the region triggered by uh, the war on Gaza. How will re Iran react? If it does not react, then there will be no deterrence, and this could continue, and, and Israel will feel that it is able 
to take out whether commanders in Syria or in Lebanon. Just yesterday, um, there was another targeted assassination in the south of the country. Um, a, a member of Hezbollah uh, killed in that strike in southern Lebanon. That's right, Zaina. And just as you're saying, you know, one of the biggest questions now is how is Iran going to respond? They have said many times during uh, since the war on Gaza began and while members of their Iran Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps have been killed, that they will respond. Just how difficult a position does this massive escalation put Iran in and how much more uh, dangerous does this make the entire conflict spilling over Gaza's borders and into the region? Well, no doubt, if they do not react and, you know, do not respond, then there will be no deterrence and Israel will continue to carry out these targeted assassinations. But, you know, there are very difficult choices here. Let me give you just one example. The front, the South Lebanon, Northern Israel front. Hezbollah opened a front to help Palestinians in Gaza. Um, it is targeting uh, military positions of the Israeli army in the north of the country. It feels that it is putting a lot of pressure on the government because tens of thousands of people were forced to leave their homes in, in northern Israel. So this has added pressure on the Israeli government. Now, but if Hezbollah were to fire rockets, and it can, it has the capabilities to do so, thousands of rockets on a daily basis and hit Tel Aviv and hit Haifa, then Israel could also hit Beirut. It could also hit um, Hezbollah, uh, uh, you know, areas where Hezbollah supporters live, leaving hundreds of thousands of people without homes. So these are very difficult choices, um, you know, for Hezbollah or for Iran the, the, to, to make because there's massive destruction on both sides. But again, there is there is this need for uh, the, the, the deterrence in order for these targeted assassinations to stop. What we're seeing really is an uptick in Israeli strikes in Syria becoming more frequent. There was a strike yesterday. There was a strike uh, two days ago or three days ago in Aleppo. More than 50 were killed in Syria. Many of them were Syrian military personnel, and at least seven of them were members of the Lebanese armed group Hezbollah. So Israel's strategy seems to be to try to degrade and weaken their enemies, whether it is in Syria, whether it is in Lebanon, whether it involves uh, targeting commanders, whether it involves targeting what it says are uh, military assets, warehouses. So. This conflict really is on a dangerous and slippery slope, a conflict, um, you know, a regional tensions that have been triggered by the war on Gaza. And as long as that war continues, then the tensions will only escalate and there will be no way to de-escalate this conflict because, for example, um, here in Lebanon, Hezbollah has made it clear they will not halt the fighting until the war on Gaza ends. Zaina, thank you very much for that. That's our correspondent Zaina Khoda joining us live from Beirut with what we know so far. And we're joined now by Ali Weiz. He's director of the Iran Project at the International Crisis Group, and he's joining us live from Washington, D.C. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, from what we know so far, what you're hearing so far, what do you make of this attack on a building in the Iranian embassy compound in the Syrian capital, Damascus? Well, it is possible that this was a response to an attack yesterday on a uh, Israeli naval uh, facility in the city of Eliyat uh, by uh, potentially Iranian-backed uh, uh, Iraqi Shia militias. Uh, but even if that was the case, uh, this seems to be a disproportionate response uh, because targeting a diplomatic facility is akin to targeting another country on its own soil uh, and having killed senior, senior uh, commanders there as well as Iranian diplomats, it seems to be a major provocation. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say when you mentioned the naval facility in Isla. Naval is a military installation. This is a diplomatic uh, facility. Our correspondent Zaina was talking about how this conflict is on a dangerous and slippery slope. Just how much more dangerous has this situation become after this latest attack? Uh, look, overall, this seems to still be a uh, low-simmer uh, regional war. It's not yet an all-out regional conflict. 
but it does appear that Israel is trying to do everything in its power uh, to expand the conflict, uh, or at least there are some elements in Israel who see benefits, political benefits, uh, possibly, uh, from uh, expanding and prolonging uh, this conflict by dragging Iran uh, and Hezbollah into it. Uh, this is, uh, at the same time, putting Israel in a uh, really win-win situation because uh, Israel knows Iran doesn't want to get dragged into a regional war. Uh, and so if uh, it uh, escalates its attacks against Iranian assets uh, and personnel in Syria, uh, it probably would be cost-free. And if Iran does respond and retaliate, then it becomes uh, a justified pretext for expanding the, the war. Yeah, I mean, you say that Israel knows that Iran doesn't want to expand this conflict, but it has to respond, doesn't it? Several members of its Iranian Revolutionary Guard have been killed since the war on Gaza began, and now this attack. That's right. And we have come a long way from the time that is, uh, Israel wanted to uh, target Iranian assets in Syria. It would actually uh, give uh, some warning through the Russians so that there will be no uh, Iranian uh, casualties or fatalities. Uh, now we're seeing that not only Israel is uh, almost on a weekly basis uh, targeting Iranian assets, but is actually targeting to kill. And now it has uh, escalated uh, significantly by targeting a diplomatic facility. But look, Iran, uh, again, uh, has plenty of experience with these kind of conflicts. Uh, and right now, its strategic interest seems to be in trying to prevent falling into this trap that it believes Israel has laid for it. Uh, and so uh, if I wanted to bet, I would bet that uh, a likely Iranian response is, is going to come through uh, uh, its proxies uh, or its partners in the region. We might see attacks on Israeli vessels in the Red Sea by the Houthis, or we might see resumption of attacks by Shia militias in Iraq and Syria on U.S. Uh, facilities. But it's very unlikely that Iran would respond directly. You said that in the past that Israel would give warnings, you know, through Russia before carrying out such attacks on Iranian installations, on Iranian assets in Syria. Why isn't that happening now? And does it have anything to do with the fact that Russia has been very outspoken against Israel's war on Gaza? Well, Russia's uh, relationship with Israel has suffered uh, since the Gaza war. There's no doubt about it. Uh, uh, and uh, there seems to be less deconfliction and coordination between the Israelis and the Russians. But this has more to do with Israel's own interest in trying to use the fog of war in Gaza to weaken uh, Iran and its allies in the region as well. Uh, but also, again, this uh, seems to be that the gloves are off right now uh, because Israel believes that in any scenario, whether Iran responds or it doesn't respond, Israel stands to gain. And lastly, Mr. Vyas, we've heard a lot from the United States, Israel's biggest ally, of course, about not wanting this conflict to expand. Do you see the United States responding to this latest attack in any way? Uh, look, the U.S. Uh, position is that if Israel uh, provokes uh, a war with Hezbollah or with Iran, it's on its own. Uh, but if Iran and Hezbollah would uh, target Israel uh, in an unprovoked manner, uh, then the uh, U.S. will come into uh, the conflict to support uh, Israel. Uh, the question right now is whether this uh, 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 line is, has been crossed uh, through uh, the, the recent attack, which, again, as I said, constitutes a major provocation. That's Ali Vyas of the International Crisis Group. Thank you for your time.